All right, let's take a look at how Windows Phone applications are built. Windows Phone applications are created using one of two different frameworks that are available from Microsoft, and it really depends on what kind of application you're building, which will determine what kind of framework you want to use. All the applications that you create are written in managed code, and they're executed in an isolated sandbox, and this is so that you have increased security on the phone. This prevents one application from reading another application's data or running amok and trashing your data on your phone and so on. The first framework we're going to look at is Silverlight. So you may have heard of Microsoft Silverlight. It is a managed code framework originally intended for use on the web. You may have seen Silverlight for things like delivering video or other kinds of rich internet applications. Well, now that same Silverlight runs on Windows Phone. And this is an event-driven and XAML-based markup. And XAML is an XML-based language that Microsoft has come up with to describe Silverlight application UI. Each application is broken into a series of pages, kind of like websites are. And the Silverlight framework is really good for applications other than games. Now you can use it to write simple games. Tetris, for example, might be a good game to write in Silverlight, but it's mainly intended for applications. The other framework is called XNA. And XNA is the same framework that you use to create games for Xbox and Windows PC-based games. XNA is focused on high performance gaming and your application is composed of all the things that go into a game like graphics and media and logic. Now in this title we're not going to talk about XNA because XNA is an advanced subject that could fill an entire title unto itself. So we're going to focus mainly on Silverlight and that's how we're going to go and build our application throughout the rest of this course. Silverlight based Windows Phone applications are based on a model that includes a frame and a page. Your application has exactly one frame in it and that frame hosts all the various pages that make up your application. And the page itself contains a content area. Now the frame has the job in life of exposing properties from the hosted page such as the full screen, which way the screen is oriented, there is a client area where the content of your pages are displayed and it reserves space for what's called the system tray and the application bar and we'll see those in a little bit and pages are where the bulk of the work is done so pages contain a title they can have their own application bar so on and so forth and you can see in the diagram on the right here at the top we have the frame the frame contains the page one or more pages and each page has a content area where content can be displayed now the system tray and the application bar are areas at the top and bottom of the frame and you don't have access to those when you're drawing your content. Those are managed by the system. So the system tray is located at the top of the frame and that's where you see things like all kinds of various and sundry system level status indicators that are common to most phones. Things like signal strength, battery strength, what time of day it is, that kind of thing. The application bar, that's this little guy down here, he's located at the bottom of the frame and that provides a place for your application to provide some icons that promote the most common tasks that your application does. So for example, if you have a calendar application, you might put a button there that says go to today or create a new appointment, so on and so forth. The application bar also expands and contracts to show menu items for your application and you can control those as well. All Windows 7 phones also contain a back button, which you can see highlighted there. And this back button is implemented in hardware. All Windows phones have it. And this is used to navigate back an application. This is usually handled for you by the framework. The framework realizes that the user has clicked the back button. And if there is a back page to go to, then that page will be navigated to automatically. In some cases, however, it's your application's responsibility to handle the back button. For example, a web browser might look at the back button presses to go back within web pages and not application pages. Okay, so now that we've seen how Windows Phone applications are organized and what they look like, we can take a look at what kinds of features we can put in them. So Silverlight on Windows Phone provides a pretty rich set of stuff that you can put into your applications. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. Here is a list of all of the existing Silverlight controls that you may be familiar with, which are supported in Windows Phone. 
So every one of these guys in a blue box, if you've used it in your Silverlight work elsewhere, you can also use it on the phone. Now, some of these are not big surprises like button or canvas or checkbox or hyperlink button. These are all pretty standard controls that you're probably used to seeing if you've ever worked with Silverlight before. And in fact, if you've ever done any web development, a lot of these names will probably sound familiar to you. Now, Windows Phone also provides a couple of custom controls and classes that you can use on Windows Phone to enhance the phone experience. So, for example, they provide a list view item and a toggle switch. These are a couple of UI elements that are specific to the phone and really lend themselves to the handheld phone UI experience. And, of course, there's a couple of controls that represent both the application frame and the application page, which I talked about just a few moments ago. These are the controls that represent how your application is contained within the phone itself. Okay, so that's probably enough talk. It's about time we started getting writing some code.